Today I love to bring you Fred and the Little Egg. Fred and the Little Egg. Swans were nesting on the lake near the dam. Fred hid in the reeds and watched them. They built soft nests of sticks and moss and laid large white eggs in them. Fred wanted to hatch an egg too, so he trotted home to the den. How can I how do I make an egg? asked Fred. Bears have cups, not eggs, said Mommy. Then what can I put in my nest? asked Fred. Bears have dens, not nests, said Mommy. Fred still wanted to hatch an egg. He wondered if he could borrow one. He trotted back down the hill to the lake and splashed, splashed over to ask a swan. The swan kissed furiously as he came close. Fred jumped the bumps, splashed, splashed backwards. He picked himself up, shook the water from his fur and squelched back to the shore. I wasn't going to hurt it, he grumbled, stopping up the hill. I'd have cared for it just as well as a swan. He plodded into the wood. Amongst the leaves, a shiny acorn suddenly caught his eyes. A teeny weeny brown egg, thought Fred. But who is here to hatch it? There was no one hidden behind the trees. Fred began to hope. Nobody answered when he called. He gave an exciting squeak. He smelled only flowers on the breeze and hung himself with happiness. The little brown egg was all alone and needed him to care for it. I'll build you a beautiful nest, said Fred. As he carried the acorn to the lake, he built a nest of sticks and moss and settled the acorn into it. He very carefully climbed on top and a crick crack splash when the nest Fred landed with a squelch in the cold wet mud with the acorn squashed underneath him. Are you all right, little egg? asked Fred. Squabbling in the mud, he gently scooped the acorn up and cradled it in his paws. I'll build you a warmer nest, said Fred. Trotting to a sunny hollow, he built a nest of grass and flowers and settled the acorn into it. He very carefully climbed on top and a Chitter chatter chat went a squirrel. I won't let anybody eat my egg, said Fred with his fierce slow start. Bears don't have eggs, said the squirrel, poking at Fred's nest. This bear does, said Fred, for me giving his Rumbia's growl, he, the squirrel jumped, waved his tail and scurved crossly away. With a bounce, bounce, bump, a baby rabbit tumbled into the hollow. Do you want to come and chase butterflies? He, she asked, brushing her from her ears. Sorry, I'm busy, said Fred. Importantly, I have to hatch my egg. Bears don't have eggs, said the rabbit, peering at Fred's nest. This bear does, said Fred proudly, and so I have to hatch it. 
With a skitter, skitter, skip, a little deer skipped down to join them. Do you want to come and jump sunbeams? She asked, shaking flowers from her fur. I do, but he's busy, said the rabbit. He has to hatch his egg. Bears don't have eggs, said the deer, nibbling at Fred's nest. This bear does, said the rabbit. No many, and so he has to hatch it. The deer and the rabbit skittered, bounced away, but Fred sat still amongst the flowers. He sat and he sat as the sun rose high and the hollow grew hotter and hotter. He sat and he sat as the lunchtime passed and his tummy began to rumble. He sat and he sat through the sleepy afternoon with insects to buzzing around him. He sat and he sat and until the sun began to set and his tummy was rumbly than thunder. Then he picked up the acorn and carried it gently all the way back to the den. My little brown egg won't hatch, said Fred, feeling very tired and grumpy. That won't hatch into a bird. It will grow into a tree like that tall old oak, said Mommy. If a tree hatches underneath me, I'll bounce up to the clouds, said Fred. He put down the acorn quickly. You don't have to sit on it. You just have to plant it in the earth like this, said Mommy. So I just sit here and wait, asked Fred. It will take a long time, said Mommy. I've got nothing else to do and, and, until tea. A very long time, said Mommy. Longer than tea time. What about bedtime? Much, much longer, said Mommy. Fred didn't think he could sit still for that long, so he looked at the earth thoughtfully. He made an egg be... What's the sound up there? The sound? Thoughtfully. Thoughtfully. Will my egg be all right if I leave it? It will be safe down there, said Mommy. What if it gets lonely without me? One will tell its story, said Mommy. I'll miss you, little brown egg, said Fred. I'll visit you every day. You will soon have a little green tree, said Mommy. The little brown egg was silent. So Fred padded off to the t tall old oak with rustled its leaves in welcome. He climbed into the branches and looked down at the lake where the swans were sitting quietly. I'm glad I don't have to sit on my egg, said Fred, swaying happily far below him safe in the earth the acorn began to grow that's the end of the story